Welcome back. Let's study the other big buzzword, generators. Generators are very cool, you'll see. Generators are a big help to the architecture of your application. They are Python's way of keeping two pieces of code running at the same time. So you have two pieces of code and one is returning data for this one to process. This collects data however it does and passes it back one at a time for this function to process. In C, if you come from a C language, you had static variables to keep track of where things were at the last call. This is how Python approaches that. The keyword yield. Now that keyword means to the interpreter and to you that this particular function is a generator function, meaning that you want it to be called in a for loop. So here I am in my for loop, there's my call. Now the first time through this for loop, potatoes will be yielded into the crop. And we'll print potatoes, and there you see them, potatoes. Then we go around again, and the second time the crop is corn. And the third time the crop is peas. And then the interpreter hits the return, the invisible return that's always there. And when that happens, it actually generates a stop iteration exception, which the for loop knows how to catch. Notice here that harvest could have returned a sequence of three strings, and it would all have looked exactly the same here. So this really happens in real life when there's something more to do than to just yield the answer. You want to do something, like go to the internet and find something. Okay. It's hard to emulate a real reason to do this, but I find real reasons. One time when I have needed it is when I needed to read a whole lot of files and find just the first line in the file that started with a pound sign. So I made a generator that generates that file name, first line, file name, first line. It's a very helpful architecture trick. Okay, here's another one. It's just a little more complicated, but it still doesn't show the deep power of the generator. It just shows the syntax. So here we shuffle up a list of the range from bottom over to top, and now I am yielding them one at a time. Let's look at this one down here on line 34. In a loop, I can call my unique, who I get those numbers one at a time in my for loop, to do whatever I wish with them. Here's what's really happening. When you call a generator function, one that has the word yield in it, the interpreter does a big, huge job making a generator object in the background. Now that generator object works very nicely with the built-in function next. When I call next on that generator object, it gives me the next yield. So that's another way to get through a generator object is to keep calling next. So that's what I did. But when you call next and there are no more objects to yield, you get that stop iteration. So I have to collect that. Let's take a look at next.py. I'm importing that generator module that we just wrote that has in it that harvest that gives us potatoes, corn, and peas. And this time I'm just calling it outside a for loop. So I am printing then the next of the generator object. And that's what gave me potatoes, the first one. And I want to show you that if you strip off the first one with the next call, and then you still put that veggie generator in the for loop, that the rest of them come. It really strips it off. It's gone, just as if it had come through a for loop. Now, here I have a toy list. I cannot call next on a list, but I could call iter on a list, and then it can work just like a generator. 
it, what it returns is a generator object. I can call next on it and then I can for loop through it. I'll show you another way to do that. Here I, instead of doing a generator and stripping off the first one, I am just looking at the first one and I'm looking at all of them beyond the first one. This particular slice gets used a lot. Skipping the first one. Okay, so now you are acquainted with next and iter. Next, to strip one off an iterator, iter to make an iterator out of a sequence. And a generator is one type of iterator. And look at line 23. Here I tried to call next on the list. And we see that we get an error that tells us that it needs to be an iterator. And we know how to do that. You're on for some lab work with these concepts. I will warn you that number four is a big deal, but it's so interesting. I think it's the most interesting code in the course. I'll see you when you've had enough of this lab.